Hello, my name is Kevin Jones. I'd like to welcome you to Reformation and Revival Now. And this is a very informal video. And many of the people that will be seeing this will be my own class. So I'd like to uh, thank all of you for watching. This is very important because this is my personal testimony. You know, I'm 57 years of age. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ at about 17, many of you guys' ages, and there are a lot of things that go into uh, becoming a Christian. But one thing a Christian isn't, it's not something that can be passed down from mother to father. You can't pass it down. You have to have your own experience with Jesus Christ. Now, I had a very, very dynamic mother who had a real walk with God, a real life with God. And I knew my mother knew the Lord. And sometimes when I wanted to be close to God, I wanted to be next to her because that was a kind of a natural thing. You don't really know God that well or at all in my case, but I knew my mama did. So I spent a lot of time with my mama in the early part of my life, particularly when it came to the things of God. But she couldn't pass that down to me. Now, I came to an age in my life where I'm having fun. You know, I was a, you know, into sports. I was into my bike really early. I was into my, riding my bike a lot in those days. And I worked a lot, had a paper route. I did everything a normal kid would do. And going to church was just part of my routine. It was part of how we were raised. So I'm having fun watching Underdog in the morning and Wonder Rama. And messing around, my mom is running late for church. And this would go on, you know, this went on probably for a few months. And finally, my mom stopped me one morning and she said to me, Son, I have raised you to serve the Lord and to fear the Lord. But you don't seem to be very serious about that. Well, I'm telling you, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm leaving for church in 10 minutes. You're either ready or you're not ready but I'm going on to serve the Lord. And it was serious for a brief moment and all my laughing and watching cartoons and on the Sunday morning, it got serious for a second and I realized that my mom made a division there. She said, I'm going to serve the Lord. And though I love you, my child, I'm not going to stop you. I'm, you're not going to stop me from serving the Lord. I'm going to be in the house of God I'm going to give myself to God and worship, and you can go or not go, but I'm going to serve the Lord. And for some reason at that time, now I couldn't have been no more than 15, probably when that happened, maybe 14. But from that point on, I knew it was my responsibility to serve the Lord and nobody else's. Now, she didn't say that, but that's what came to me when she had that conversation with me. From that point on, when I would go to church with my mom on a Sunday morning, I was ready. Now, I wasn't a Christian, but I knew it was serious. I knew that serving God was serious. Now, a few, a few years later, I had a crisis. And even though I was baptized at eight years old and received the Baptist right hand of fellowship, um, I would have called, I would have told anybody that I was a Christian, but I wasn't. Because at the time when I was baptized, I really was touched by God's love. And I believed that Jesus was Lord. But there was one thing that was missing. And that was the issue of sin. At 17, God dealt with me for the first time as a sinner. I began to be convicted about how I was living my life. Because I was saying I was believing in God, but I was living for me. I'm going to tell you, that's one thing you cannot do. You can't fake about being a Christian. When you are not a Christian, you live for you. You cannot change that. You are the center of the universe. But once you become a Christian, he is the center of the universe. And everything that you do is around Christ. It's around God. Well, everything evolved around me and God finally got me to the point to see it's been about you. It's been about you, your lies, the things you've wanted, the deception that you created to your mother. Now remember, God is saying these things to me. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, 
I was a virgin, I didn't cuss, but I still lived for me and I was still a deceiver. I played church. I had no relationship with God. I had my life and I gave God my two cents on Sunday morning. Now why am I sharing that? I am saying that for all of you who know me and all of you who go to my class. I had to have a relationship with Jesus that was my own. Not my mother, not having a world view about God or a Christian viewpoint. No, I had to meet Christ for myself. He touched me when I was eight or nine years old when I got baptized. He touched me with his love. That was real. But I had not surrendered my life to Christ yet. I was still in charge and boss. And from this time on, God began to deal with me first as a sinner, and then he began to deal with me, who is your Lord? So on my bunk bed, on, off of my bunk bed in my uh, brother's and I's room on the, on the top level of the house, not even in a church service, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I have served the Lord. I have served him ever since then. I was afraid that day to leave the house because all of a sudden I knew that if I die, I'm going to hell. Now, nobody told me that. God was just dealing with me about my life. And I want to say to you right now as you're hearing this, what is God speaking to you about? Because you'll never serve God because I do. You have to serve Jesus Christ because you have your own experience with him. You've embraced him. You've surrendered your life to him. And nobody can give you that but God. Look, if those of you who are parents, remember, I know you want your kids to serve the Lord, but Jesus has to get, get involved in their lives personally. You can't be a Christian until Jesus individually owns you. There's no way. Why should Jesus save you and you don't belong to him? If you belong to him, then your life will be surrendered to him. You won't be able to live it like you want. You'll be able to live it like he wants. That's what it means to be converted. When you convert, you convert over to living for yourself, to living for him. That's what it means to be a Christian. It's not saying a sinner's prayer. It's giving your life over to him when the revelation of his grace comes to you and you know that you're his forevermore. So I wanted to share that with you because everybody's got a testimony that's a real Christian. Regardless of what it is, my testimony was I was a churchgoer. I was raised in church. I understood the Bible. I knew John 3, 16. I had all that in my favor, but I had yet to experience Jesus Christ. As you see in the video in the background, I'm a preacher today. But that's not what makes me a Christian. I was a Christian because at 17 years of age, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I asked him to come into my life, and I repented of my sin and surrendered my life. I said, Lord, from now on, I belong to you. And that is what I'm asking all of you to consider. Have you considered the Jesus that died on the cross and rose again wants a relationship with you? And as much as he does want that relationship with you, he can't have it unless you surrender your life. If you still want to run your life, you're not ready to be a Christian. But if you're ready to give your life over to God, he's ready to receive you. So let's surrender today. If you're ready, let's pray together. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray together right now. Don't worry about what your friends think. Don't worry about what people think. It's only going to matter in the last day what he thinks. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I give you my life. Lord, I don't understand all of this. I just know, Lord, I ain't serving you. I just know that I'm not a real Christian. I've always believed in you, Lord, but I've never surrendered my life. But today... I give my life to you. Today, I give my life to you, Lord. Jesus, come into my life. Take away my sins. Lord, enter my soul, into my heart. Take me over, King Jesus. I believe you are my Savior because now I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I pray that, I pray that out of my experience. I'm leading you to Christ, but I'm actually sharing with you the way Jesus brought me. I knew all about God. 
But there came a time at 17 when I said, the God that I knew all about as a little boy finally became my master and finally became my Lord and the true love of my life. So that's my testimony. I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. Write Sultan and I and tell me where you're at in God. Tell me what he's speaking to you. Because all the good preaching in the world is great. But unless Jesus, unless you have an encounter with Jesus Christ yourself, unless you experience him, you can't really be a Christian. You cannot study the Bible and be a Christian. You have to allow Jesus to reveal to you the word so that you can receive him. It's by his spirit. Jesus says, nobody can come to me except the father that sent me draws that person's heart. That's what the Lord says. So you can't just be a Christian because you decide to. God's got to be dealing with you. Is he dealing with you? Write Sultan and I. Drop us a line. Let us know what you're going through. Well, God bless you. Just wanted to share that testimony with you. And I'll see you in videos to come. Bye-bye now.